Well, we just wanted to do a video about how I came to be a stay-at-home mom and what that looked like, um, you know, the whole journey to that, I guess, um, financially and spiritually and yeah. So, take it away. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. What do so, you... how long has it been? <clears throat> Sydney's nine, so seven and a half years. Yeah. So probably eight years ago we started, or maybe a little longer, at least eight years ago we started feeling like um, you needed to be at home, like more. You, you know, you were working, I was working. We had Sydney and she was staying with uh, one of the grandparents, which was really nice. And your mom actually quit her job just to keep her, which was really nice. Um, we couldn't have asked for a better situation, you know, financially and just, um, you know, we knew who was keeping her every day, yeah. which was nice. But still, um, we were just led to, like, do something different. You needed to be at home more and we needed to do life differently. Any, any thoughts on that? Um, what that actually means? Um, well, I think just throughout the course of our marriage, it's, you know, God has spoken to us in, um, well, through other people a lot. Um, and also just through like these impressions like you know it won't go away mm. a, an idea or a thought or something um and then you get all these little confirmations along the way you know someone will say something who doesn't even know anything about your situation um and we did have a couple of those things that happened um and we took those as just confirmations that that is exactly the path that we were on even though it didn't make much sense to us um when did we go through the thing at church what? um was that before you started staying at home yes okay mm -mm. yeah that was one of them yeah there was something said from some friends of ours that basically said you need to do this and everything's going to be okay kind of thing so yeah. it was very clear mm -hmm. and um so yeah, but um, we didn't really understand how it was going to be, be possible. Like just looking at it financially, it was like there's no way we could do this. <coughs> um, you know, you were working, and I just started a new business, and um, you were making more than I was. Mm -hmm. at the time and um but i guess that that call and that leading or whatever was so strong it was like well we just have to do this and just trust that it's going to be the right thing mm -hmm. so we decided to um get out of debt that was um which we had always been on that path of getting out of debt but we still had a car payment, we still had credit card payments, we still had, I don't, probably some miscellaneous smaller debts. And so we started down the Dave Ramsey plan of uh, the steps to get out of debt. So we paid our smallest debt, took all that money, paid on the next biggest debt, and then, uh, which couldn't have been much because we paid our car off so fast. I think our car was our biggest debt mm -hmm. outside of the house. Mm -hmm. And so And we had remodeled our house so we had we had yeah. some some bills, you know, lows mm -hmm. and things that we were paying off too, so that was pretty Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, we <clears throat> we got those off and then we finally got to the car and we were able to make uh, twenty seven car payments in three months. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so we basically took every penny and put it <laughs> toward that. 
yeah. and paid it off. And after that, it was like, okay, I think this is possible now. Yeah. There was still, you know, I don't know the amount, a hundred bucks or 200 bucks. You know, when we looked at our budget, it was probably like a hundred dollars. We're like, well, we don't know where this is going to come from every month. Mm -hmm. We're going to be this much short mm -hmm. every month if you quit now. Mm -hmm. But then a couple weeks later, I looked at it again. We redid our budget and it was like, Oh, now we're going to be over by like $25 <laughs> or something. It was kind <laughs> I'd of... I miscalculated something. It was actually. kind of the strangest thing. Yeah. It was like, you know, once we were obedient because we knew what we were supposed to be doing, once we started the process of being like, okay, we're going to do this, Lord, it was... It, we had looked at our numbers and looked at our numbers like several times mm -hmm. and it was always like well we're just going to be short on our bills every yeah. month and we did not like we were planning on not going out to eat not doing extra things i mean i remember those years like mm -hmm. you know we didn't have five dollars to go get a burger like it was it was lean yeah and um and um then i remember you saying just one evening you're like let's just look at it one more time mm -hmm one more time let's just look at the numbers and yeah. we did and it was just like what just happened to our numbers <laughs> yeah. they look yeah. different the last when he yeah. was like let's just look one more time it just looked different on paper mm -hmm. and it was still like i mean it was over like we we're we we're going to make more like 25 bucks more than what our expenses were going to be right but it, previously it had been a hundred or two hundred dollars less like well, I don't know how we're going to do that still after paying the car off, but anyway. So at that point, we were like, okay, this time. <laughs> we know this is the so, answer. Yeah. So did you want to talk about, like, actually quitting? Or um, was that a big deal? Well, I don't know if this is pertinent, but I'll put it in the video just to see. Um, but... Um, one of, I guess, something I failed to mention, one of the ways that I knew this was what we were supposed to do um, was that I started grieving over leaving Sydney. Like, not in a not in a crazy like helicopter mom way but it was just kind of like i'm grieving over the time i'm missing with her and she you know i mean babies are so fun they're learning so many new things and she was um she was a year about a year old when we really started being like okay you know we've got to do something um but uh, she was learning and doing all kinds of stuff and like he said like we were taking her to my mom's and that was a perfect situation um she loved her um, they left spending that time together. My mom had retired from the school system just to keep her. She was learning so much with my mom. I mean, it was an ideal situation. We weren't afraid for her safety or anything like that. It was just, um, I would drop her off in the morning and I would just cry all the way to work. I would cry while I was at work and I would think up any, any way I altered my schedule so that I was working four 10 hour days so I could be home with her on Fridays just to be able to like spend a bigger chunk of time with her. Um, <clears throat> and um, yeah, so it wasn't, I mean, I, I, I liked where I worked. I liked the people I worked with. They were very supportive. My supervisor was very supportive when I said uh, I need to go home and be with my family. Um, he commended that and was very supportive of that and um, yeah I still I still love to communicate with those people and mm -hmm. um, yeah it was a really good job yeah it was I was I was helping kids I got to go and visit kids and families go in their homes every day and help kids with developmental delays um, receive the services that they needed to um, to thrive and so it was it was a really good job, but I knew my time there was over and it was time to be um, with my baby, so. Yeah. So then when you came home, um, I mean, things didn't get easy, you know. Right. At all. Um, you know, like I said, we were, our, we, we had a budget and like our income was like less than half of what it was now. Yeah. So, um, <coughs> So yeah, things really changed drastically. Mm -hmm. It was a 
I guess we did a monthly budget, and so I knew what I made every month, and, and we wrote that down. And so, yeah, we had cash for everything. We didn't go out to eat. We, we had a really hard time, like, with birthdays and mm -hmm. gift-giving type stuff. Which I was thinking about this the other day. We still are not very good gift givers. Like we're yeah. just not. Yeah. And I, it might stem from that. Like, cause I used to, back in the day, I would just buy anything on credit cards um, mm. and, and give them as gifts. But, but we got to where we didn't expect gifts from people. We actually mm. preferred not to get gifts from people because we could yeah. not reciprocate. You know, we, yeah. we, um, we would make things mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. But, um, yeah, we weren't, yeah. and then, and it was hard, like, you know, I know I went through a period where I, f I started feeling really sorry for myself, I guess, because, um, because my friends would ask me to go out to eat, or they would be like, let's go get coffee. I could not afford a cup of coffee, like, mm -hmm. I mean, that's the place that we were mm -hmm. at, and, um, and I guess maybe that's why we're making this video, is for people that are in, you know, if you're in that stage of life where you know you're making huge sacrifices for your family or for you know to to be able to do something really big and important like just stick with it it's worth it you know because mm. um, it's it's not easy yeah. the, you know I mean that's the word sacrifice me <laughs> you know yeah it's not just something to take lightly it's it's huge so um, yeah. Yeah, so now that we're we've gone through all that, you know, we we're still really frugal. Like, mm -hmm. you know, it's not about what you make, it's about how you spend it. And I feel like we're really frugal still. Mm -hmm. um, fortunately, with my job now, I do make more money than I did when I had my own business, <clears> which <throat> helps, but um, still it, it's uh, it's about like now we we don't have any debt. We you know, we've paid all of our debts. Uh, except for the house, still, which is large, but that's going to be pretty soon, you know, in the next three to five years, hopefully, it'll be paid off. Um, so that's kind of how we live, just frugally, no debt, pay cash for stuff, and, um, yeah, it's not, it's not as hard, but we still budget, like we used to. Um, but all those times that was hard or were hard what's the right way all those times that were hard <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's right yeah all those times that were hard uh like really hard is worth it because of because of you being able to be at home yeah definitely worth it like we say now i don't know how people do it without one of the parents being at home mm -hmm. like how how do you raise a kid yeah. But I know everybody can't and everybody, everybody's not called to do that. Mm -hmm. But I guess being on this side of it, it's like, man, I don't know how people do that. that yeah. Where both parents work. Yeah. Yeah. So, it's hard. Yeah. And it's not that we don't work, but, you know, we get to work together at home, you know, on stuff. Yeah. So. I think, uh, and I actually thought about this last week of... Um, my friend Marie sent me a card and I got it um, she's one of these like snail mail people she likes sending and receiving mail and I do too so um, I really appreciated it but it was like the first day I was at home full-time with Sydney mm -hmm. I got a card in the mail and I don't I still have it I don't remember it exactly I haven't dug it out but um I don't remember exactly everything she said in it but to sum it up it was basically here's to your sanctification mm. and um and I've been having some different conversations with friends the last couple of weeks about sanctification and and at that point in my life I didn't even really know what that meant um so and I think there's, I don't know how to say this, but you can, you can either take offense at sanctification or you can embrace it, I guess is the best way of saying it. And 
I think maybe at the time I was I was a little like kind of like hmm taken aback by those words just because I thought what do I have to learn like I'm you know like we've been through so much what do I really have to learn yeah. now um, <coughs> yeah you're the one that's sacrificing like, well, yeah, <laughs> right yeah. but it was it's been like such a learning experience uh, learning about myself learning about the kids um, trusting God um, just you know being delivered from fear which I've talked about before um, and and I'm still learning I've still got stuff to learn and um, but I know that me coming home was not just for the kids it was it was for me um, God wanted to pull things out of me that needed to be pulled out and um, and he chose to bring me home to do that so um, uh, and you know I've struggled some through the years especially the past three years that we've had farm life outfitters because uh, I've that's that's something I really um, am passionate about and I really enjoy it and I think a lot of stay-at-home moms struggle with not helping anymore not providing income anymore if they were used to doing that and that's why a lot of people start their side businesses but um, anyways I'm still learning I'm still learning how to sort all that out uh, how to put the kids and Adam first and um, and not overwork and not yeah you were just talking about this a little while ago about how you're trying to be more intentional about your rest time with us or you know like yeah just resting and not working all the time and stuff but um there's so much to do <laughs> and you're a one <laughs> and you just can't help it but that's good that you recognize that and you're like I probably should try a little harder just to rest sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I guess mine is not necessarily a matter of rest, even though I do work a lot on that. But it's just um, what's consuming my time and my energy and my mind and, um, and making sure that, you know, I'm spending time in the Word and uh, I'm spending time with the kids and I'm really concentrating on what I'm doing. Um, yeah, I haven't sorted through all that yet. All my, all the thoughts that I have about <clears throat> being at home and or working from home or, you know, all that kind of stuff, but it's just a learning process and you just have to be open with your spouse about what you're doing and um, what your intentions are and you know we have talked about that Farm Life Outfitters started I think with the intention in mind that we were wanting to provide an income for our family apart from what you were doing mm -hmm. um, to hopefully replace your income one day but then it just turned when it didn't just take off like immediately then it was like well this is just my hobby basically this is just what I like to do this is just how um, you know my creative outlet while I'm at home is just going to be to work on this business and then like we've talked about recently it's kind of like three years later now it's like we're seeing a little bit of fruit from just me being consistent with working on the brand and letting it evolve and not giving up on it and so so it's good it's just life we're just riding it and figuring out yeah what we're doing and um 
it's okay that we don't have all the answers but um yeah anyways i don't know how that had to i don't know how that tied into this but well, i guess because it <coughs> it's the same kind of feeling now for me to come home and mm -hmm. it's, it's kind of like i don't know how we would do that mm -hmm. so it's sort of the same thing mm -hmm. that we're working toward but i don't know It's hard. To, it's hard to just do it. But sometimes I feel like we just need to do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because with that, it's it's been that same consistent like nudging from God. Like, you know, I know what you're supposed to be doing right now. Mm -hmm. But I, you know, like He's given us the grace just to figure things out and to not jump headfirst and and to be. You know, just to prepare us, to train us, and um, teach us how to trust Him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, to be continued. Like this, yeah. I feel like this is one of those yeah. <laughs> dumb, yeah. dumb, dumb. Yeah. Like, you know. Yeah. It's just the learning curve with everything is so expensive. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Yeah. Usually. For most things. Yeah. Mistakes can cost a lot. Mm -hmm. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> How do we end this video? That's a good question. <laughs> so we just hope that uh, this topic and, and this video will encourage someone who is feeling those same things, you know. You, you want to stay at home with your kids, or you want to become debt free, or you want to, whatever, pursue a dream that you have always had. Um, I think you'll know the right time. I think you'll know when it's the right time to just do it. it may not make sense, but um, I would say just do it and it'll work out in some way <laughs> it may not be what you think it may not work out the way you yeah. think it's going to but but it's going to be for your good if you're trusting the lord it's going to be for your good yeah mm -hmm. all see you next time talk to you later <laughs>